Hey, sorry about that. Um, ten minute time limit ran out, and uh, I had a couple more things I wanted to say, so I'll just finish them off with this part too. Um, where I was finishing off from last time is that I figured that if we actually used uh, the the, ter the tools of logic, and critical thinking, and a little bit of uh, and a little bit of uh, imagination, and knowing where our gray areas are. Uh, you know, knowing where our weeks, uh, if anything, logic is one of the best self-assessment tools that we have, um, um, you know, and rationality, um, if only to help us, you know, if only to help us uh, be fully aware of where we're at, you know, uh, of not only where we stand, you know, but then, uh, you know, but, you know, by not knowing, even by, even by using logic to determine what we actually don't know, Will um, will often help us even phrase the way we ask questions. the uh, The problem comes in when people assume that they've uh, uh, when people assume that they have all the data that there is to know, and uh, and therefore, or you know, there's enough data that they can just simply uh, you know write things off as next to impossible. Or or uh, no, I phrase that badly. Let me rephrase that. The um, the problem comes in when people assume, oh, I already have enough information, and uh, and that's that, and I don't really need any more, or uh, that they genuinely don't think that there's really much uh, any much point in looking at new information. So when new information comes up, they just simply uh, chuck it off to the side. Um, unfortunately, um, I've actually read some skeptical arguments. Uh, I've read some fellow skeptics' arguments. Um, against parapsychology, and um, again, this is one of the. Again, I'm a skeptic myself of psychic phenomena, so I want to be uh, perfectly clear on this. Uh, but you know, I've taken a look at some of the arguments, which have basically said like, "Oh well, you know, parapsychology has had a really uh, has had a, a history of not proving anything for the past century, so we don't need to look at every new little anomaly. Uh, so you know, if new evidence comes up, we can just write it off." Well, the problem with that is the fact that if you do get a new statistical anomaly in terms of, uh, you know, with tightened empirical controls and stuff like that, you may actually have something there. It may not be psi phenomena. It could even be a new, um, a new uh, format of uh, of heightened sensory capability, or or of a of an experimental artifact that we've never seen before that um, that could be very useful in terms of a uh, of of tightening experimental controls and the like. Uh, you know, it, for for learning how to do science. Sometimes, um, James Randi once said, uh, um, uh, their parapsychology has brought us nothing um, uh, in the past century beyond advancing the, uh, the, the, um, the understanding of, the, of fraud and swindle, of course. Well, actually, no. There is a couple of other things it has brought us. It's also brought us the understanding of uh, not just of fraud and swindle, but of how uh, the mind interprets day-to-day uh, -day events. Um, large amounts of, uh, of new skeptical data about how, uh, about how the mind processes things after the fact in terms of incorrect memory and the like came from researching uh, in the early days into parapsych phenomena. Another thing that has also come out of this is uh, better use of statistics. Uh, I mean, the, um, uh, to take a prominent example, um, again, as I said, I'm still uh, I'm skeptical of this. A prominent example of, uh, of this, the Gansfeld experiments. There have been four meta-analyses done to date. The first two, um, it was noted, had a whole bunch of experimental flaws, and, and Horniton and Hyman made a joint communique after the second one uh, to take a look at. Um, then, uh, then the Otto Gansfeld came up, and Milton and Wiseman ran a third meta-analysis in 1999. They lay, uh, Milton, uh, one of the two skeptics who took a look at this, later realized that they had inadvertently caused the same, uh, that they had inadvertently conducted the same file drawer effect. Uh, that they had accused the uh, that they had accused uh, proponents of doing at one point with meta-analysis, and when Milton took into account two new studies that had actually just come out at that same time period with the same Titan controls, but had not been taken into account, the overall uh, the overall um, probability, um, uh, you know, the overall uh, score of the entire meta-analysis reached statistically significant. They've had a meta-analysis since then of four of eleven uh, new studies. Uh, of Gansfeld since then in 2001. And they've got um, even newer studies uh, which are still underway in six different universities uh, halfway across the world that are taking a look at this stuff now, trying to generate new hypotheses as to what may be causing this, new experimental artifacts they didn't take a look at the last times. Uh, the Kostler Parapsychology Unit, which is a, uh, a prominent, um, the, the, the people who generally hosted the Gansfeld, if you take a look at their website right now, they're also taking a look at other, um, they're also taking a look at other um, uh, possible explanations for psi, uh, uh, other than the psi hypothesis, they want to take a look at. Well, y they want to take a look at in greater detail um, what um, uh, what uh, what doesn't count. Uh, you know what is a normal event but would not count as psi. 
um, they're taking a look at what might be experimenter effects, you know, like uh, like uh, experimenter bias and the like. There's, I mean, and some of these issues, uh, for example, um, medicine has some of these issues double-blinded, but psychology, uh, mainstream psychology, is repute, uh, and not, not when we're talking about uh, double-blind te testing for medicines, but there are a whole bunch of areas in, par in, in mainstream psychology where experimenter effects and influencing subjects in terms of surveys and the like are still being discussed all the time. Parapsych research into some of these experimenter effect areas could have benefits back over in mainstream psych in how to better avoid, um, you know, experimenters uh, influencing subjects that they're uh, that they're testing that sort of thing. I mean, like you know, there are benefits to this sort of research over in other areas. It may not necessarily be that there's a psi phenomena, and as for myself, I'm a skeptic of it. But there's still further research of this. But people have to ask the right questions and want to be able to figure out what it is. Richard Wiseman, um, a, a person who used to, who got his doctorate at uh, at uh, the University of Edinburgh and was re originally working on the Gensfeld, he became a skeptic and defected. But now he's taking a look into areas of uh, superstition, uh, how we believe luck happens. Um, I mean, like there. I mean, it's always been known that we. Uh, I mean, it's been known for the better part of a few decades now that we tend to forget our hits more than our misses. But there's still a lot of gray area in that that we honestly don't know about. And some skeptics, uh, you know, some skeptical uh, psychologists who took a look into parapsych phenomena and the like, are still actually seriously looking into these aspects to understand the uh, the psychological elements of this or the sociological contexts. I mean, like this is a field which. The, sci the, su the, the existence of psi itself is a controversial subject, but researching into parapsychology need not be, um, or in any field of endeavor or science. We should be constantly checking the balance. We should be constantly checking the latest evidence coming out um, if to, to, you know, um, when Titan controls and the like are happening, and rather than just simply writing off the field because there was one bad data point or a few bad data points from a few parapsychologists, we should be constantly taking a look at the field. Um, to do so is a straw. Uh, to not do so is a straw man attack. Um, Ray Hyman himself uh, pointed this out. Um, Marcelo Truzzi, another uh, another prominent skeptic, also pointed this out. Um, you know, we have uh, and 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 not just here, but also in in terms of physics and other and in uh, in the latest in the in the frontiers of science in every field. It is our duty. As uh, uh, you know, and in the frontiers of, of of human endeavor, it is our job as as human beings to uh, you know when it when it when it involves our daily lives to use logic, uh, you know, to take a look at do we know the answers to this? Do we have enough information that we can genuinely make a decision? Global warming, for example, is another one, or climate change is another one of these issues. Do we have enough data right now to say that, oh, uh, we can just cut back on fossil fuels and avert the worst of it? Or should we be actually looking at uh, possibilities of how to adapt to some of these climate issues, like the uh, green polar ice caps melting? I mean, there's in some of these areas, there's a little bit of conflicting peer-reviewed data that we have to take a look at. Some uh, papers actually have come out saying that even if we stop the fossil fuel uh, reduction, um, you know, even if we stopped our, 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 um, our CO2 emissions and the like, um, the effects would be irreversible and we'd still be having to deal with this and we should be adapting. Um, there are other issues that we're, that we're not even looking at, like the depletion of fossil fuels and metals within a century or so. And uh, we're worried about uh, a large chunk of the, uh, you know, maintaining our, our, our world and poverty and like that. But nobody's thought to think about, well, you, nobody's actually stopped to think about, um, or beyond a few scientists like Gerard K. O'Neill and the like, well, we should be thinking about looking at the, at the rest of the solar system, seeing what resources are there to help support industrial civilization. So this way we can uh, maintain technological society and continue, uh, you know, expanding and developing and, you know, helping our species evolve. Um, both technologically and naturally, um, you know, over the uh, over the longer term period, you know, nobody, you know, it's it, this is not in mainstream talk, you know, like this is just one of plenty of, of plenty of examples. I mean, like, you are right, we are not rational animals, and we have limited spheres of viewpoint. And a lot of people, um, as I'm going to say, uh, like I said from your other video, I think a lot of people um, they may not necessarily be uh, happy. Uh, I mean, they always keep griping about the world and stuff like that. But they must be comfortable, otherwise uh, more people would actually be getting out of their shells and would be trying to overcome their fear of, of the unknown or, or fear of actually getting up and doing anything or, or thinking like, uh, or, or would actually try to get themselves out of the mindset of, oh, I'm just one person, what can I possibly do against such a big monolith? Of, of, of conspiracies, of, 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 of the corporations uh, oppressing us and everything. You know, you get my point? We are too stagnant. 
we have been too stagnant for now, and more of us need to start getting out there. Toodles.